good afternoon, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for a, another in the series of Will Work for Food, the New Possibilities Hour videos. As you may well know, we don't charge anything for these fantastic uh, educational, informative, or entertaining programs. We hope instead that you find the value of these programs so great that you will support either your local food bank or the preferred food bank of our great presenters. And today our presenter um, is someone that I met, oh my goodness, Stuart, 25 years ago? Probably, uh, probably closer to 30, Natalie. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, that's my, okay. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. All Long right. Time. <laughs> a long, yeah, long enough ago. It, it's, it's been a minute or two. But uh, Stuart is a unique person in our industry. He is the loveliest combination of the science of what we do, the process of what we do. And he has spoken on that topic many, many times throughout the decades. But he also has a great affinity for the art of what we do. And I think that that's a, a fantastic combination to have in a single person. Um, and Stuart has been a, and a tremendous mentor to many of us in this industry over the decades. Today, he's going to be talking about the poetics of conflict resolution and the idea that mediators often think of themselves as professionals engaged in a discipline with very firm guidelines and edges. Um, we're hoping to learn a lot more about where those guidelines might be blurred a little bit. Stuart Levine, um, a friend and colleague, has always referred to himself as a resolutionary. Then that's my favorite word to describe our industry, the resolution industry. Stuart is a creative problem solver who is widely recognized for creating agreement and empowerment in the most challenging circumstances. He improves productivity while saving an enormous cost of conflict. He did some really innovative work with agreements for results and his resolutionary conversational model, um, which is very unique. He's a practicing lawyer um, who realized that fighting was ineffective by way of solving problems. Um, he has a fantastic background. He's worked for 3M, American Express, Chevron, ConAgra, EDS, General Motors, um, Oracle, Safeco, University of San Francisco, uh, Departments of Agriculture, Navy, the list goes on and on. Stuart is a really impressive resume. I hope that you'll find him on LinkedIn, Google his name, connect with him, um, and, and hopefully buy his book that he's going to be talking about uh, a little bit today. Well, Stuart, uh, I know that um, you're in the Bay Area and you'd like for us to consider making a donation to the Alameda Food Bank. The link is in the chat. If you are thinking about where it is you'd like to donate money, anyone who's watching this program, please consider the Alameda Food Bank. They do tremendous work there. And Stuart, before I let you have the floor, I just want to mention that the generosity of our industry has to date raised for food banks that we've been told about 409,300. Yeah, four hundred nine thousand three hundred and fifty dollars, a really impressive amount of money going to food banks worldwide. We really appreciate all of your efforts. And Stuart, my friend, I'll turn the floor over to you. I'm really looking forward to your program. Great. Thank you, Natalie. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And yes, please do contribute to the Alameda Food Bank. They do a great job of um, feeding the folks in Alameda that need um help it's really interesting even though that we are a um you know a community of some means there are always people um on the margins that need help and um the alameda food bank does a a, a beautiful job of that i know some um friends that are active um so uh if you are so inclined please make a contribution it really is amazing that it seems like only yesterday um but I don't know how many months ago it was, or maybe a year ago, Natalie, that I presented when you first uh, crossed the $200,000 mark. And I was very proud to be part of that day. So, um, you know, thank you and acknowledgement for your um, extraordinary work on this. 
um, in founding this and then and continuing this um, over the years. It's a, a, a great, wonderful effort. And that's a that's a chunk of change. So um, kudos. So um, just by way of um, introduction, aside from uh, the kind words Natalie shared, uh, uh, aside from the book that I'll share with today, that that I'm uh, I'll talk about um, two of the other seminal books that I like to mention are a book called Getting to Resolution: Turning Conflict into Collaboration, uh, which uh, no doubt a number of you are familiar with, and the Book of Agreement. And you know, one of the things that I'm very very proud of is the Book of Agreement. In many ways, is the Foundation for Conscious Contracting, which no doubt many of you um, are familiar with. Okay, so um, Pilgrim's Path, Morning Practice for Seekers. Pilgrim's Path, Morning Practice for Seekers, all right? Where did that come from? I'll get the link in the chat, all right? Um, where did it come from? <clears throat> In the year 2000, um, which is 22 years ago, um, I had been at the suggestion of a coach therapist um, journaling one page a day. Um, in other words, the first thing I did in the morning was I would take out my journal and I would, you know, uh, just write down uh, a whole page just to kind of um, get out what was, you know, uh, inside of me. And on this particular morning, and it just, it's really interesting that I was on um, a little weekend retreat on Whidbey Island off of the coast of Seattle, which coincidentally is the home of the very famous poet uh, by the name of David White, that a number of you might be familiar with. If you're not, David does um, extraordinary work. Um, to me, he's one of the wise guys on the planet right now. But anyway, just that that was a complete coincidence that that was where David happened to live. But I sat down to write um, my one page journal in the morning and out came 20 lines of rhyme. I have no idea where it came from. Um, and I just kind of scratched my head and went, wow, this is really interesting. Um, over the next three years, I produced 500 poems. I would sit down in the morning. I would write a, I would write a one word title and out would come 20 plus or minus lines of rhyme. Um, I was processing a lot of stuff internally. And so at the end of three years, I had a stack of notebooks. <laughs> which I put in the corner of my office, and there they sat for about seven or eight years. Now, the funny story behind that, in some ways, is that I started to get a reputation that I could produce a poems, you know, just in an instant. And my favorite story is when I went to my, uh, my dear niece's uh, 30th birthday party, and um, I brought her was at a restaurant in New York. I brought her a couple of dozen roses. And um, at some point in the evening, I said, Stephanie, how do you like the, uh, the roses? She said, I love the roses, Uncle Stuart, but where's my poem? <laughs> and so I turned to her and I said, all right, give me 10 minutes. And I just disappeared and out came a poem. Um, that was uh, a, a lovely experience along with writing a poem for my father's 90th birthday, um, kind of on demand, which was a, also a lovely experience. It's a, it's a, a kind of cherished poem. Um, now, uh, how does this tie into mediation? Okay, how does this tie into, into the work that we do? Um, as, as Natalie said, you know, I have always found that, you know, um, mediation is an art you know you sit down in front of two people or three people or a group of people and um there you have it you know you're the you're the tour guide you're the sherpa you're the one who is 
trying to guide people um, from where they are uh, in a situation of conflict through to the other side. So um, what I did to prepare for today, and by the way, um, just to finish the story uh, about the, the book of poetry, Pilgrim's Path, um, after the poem sat in the corner of my office for about seven or eight years, uh, and one day I decided, all right, it's time to do something with these. So I um, coincidentally was talking to a friend and colleague whose uh, sister was a uh, poet uh, and a professor of poetry at the University of San Francisco. And I hired her to look at the poems, to um, do a little bit of editing, and to give me a little feedback. And she said, yeah, these are actually um, really good. And the interesting thing is that historically, before there was the written word, before there was the written word, there was the spoken word. And um, the spoken word in iambic pentameter, which these poems are, um, was the way that wisdom was passed down from generation to generation. So I went, hmm, wow, well, that's interesting. Um, anyway, I then spent time noodling with the poems over a number of years. Um, and what I did also was I got rid of the ones that I didn't think were that good or were uh, duplicates. And um, I ended up with 365 poems, one poem for each day of the year um, with reflective questions. Um, it's modeled on a book in some ways that was done by a, a very wise guy by the name of, a poet by the name of Mark Nepo, N-E-P-O, who wrote a book called The Book of Awakening, The Book of Awakening, which is one page of text with reflective questions. So in some ways, Pilgrim's Path is modeled after that. Now, when people have said to me, what does it take to be a great mediator? Um, I said, I always say, work on yourself. Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, um, many people on this call and in this, in this group um, are lawyers. And as lawyers, what do we learn? We learn to be advocates. We learn to push towards a particular result. And so in some ways, uh, to become a really good neutral facilitator, mediator, um, the opposite skill is what's demanded. We need to learn to be an open presence. We need to learn to have patience. We need to learn to um, see what's developing in front of us. And we need to um, help sometimes nudge a little bit where the people we're working with uh, want to go. So, mm -hmm. after many years of noodling this year, I finally decided it's time to get these poems out there. And so um, here we have it, uh, um, Pilgrim's Path Morning Practice for Seekers. So um, as I was preparing for this little talk today, I just went through the index in my book of poetry and I pulled out about... Um, a dozen poems that I thought related to um, what it is that we um, tried to do as mediators, as neutrals. Um, and what I'd like to do is um, share some poems, but after I share each one, just um, open up um, the floor for any comment, discussion, thoughts, questions that uh, any of you might have. And we'll see if we can't um, generate a little bit of um, discussion around that. Okay. Um, love to see your faces animated. Uh, Carol Ann, thank you for having your camera on. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Um, but would love to see uh, everybody else uh, if you are uh, so inclined. Okay. All right, so the first poem um, that I want to read um, 
is the great way that we um, prevent um, conflict. And often what's missing when people um, come to us. Uh, and the poem is called um, Agreements, okay? Agreements. Uh, as I said, it's often what's missing. Um, it's the end result that we aim for, some um, new agreement. Um, but let's start with this one. Agreements are all over. Without them, you're a rover. Implicit, framing a collaboration. Explicit, results beyond expectation. Shared visions set a clear plan. Build trust for woman and man. Alignment and agreements in place. Easier to reach states of grace. Accomplish little alone. Harness together stronger than stone. Hook talents to a team with a mission. Results flow from expressed joint vision. Partners with a deep covenant light you up with energy abundant. Solid ground with your team, with loved ones express a dream. Know who you are, what you're about, align with others, stand back, shout. Be amazed with great delight. Teammates make your life bright. Results beyond what you had in mind, life force wells up without any bind. Satisfaction fills your heart. Joining with others, life becomes art. So that's um, the way we prevent conflict when we actually create alignment at the beginning of projects. And it's the intention that as a good neutral mediator, we ought to have <laughs> in terms of um, reframing, um, reorganizing, um, coming up with a, uh, a resolution that gets people back into relationship with each other. Um, a lot of my work is um, has been um, with working in personal context, um, partnerships, um, divorce mediation, um, probably a little different than than some of the uh, people who do more commercial work, uh, which has got more of a financial edge to it. But at some level, you know, all mediations are about uh, relationship. So any thoughts, questions, comments about that particular poem? Stuart, I'll, I'll jump in. First, it, very nice. It, I really like the idea that everyone has something valuable to bring to the table and that the cumulative effect of all of those, those contributions make the end result so much better. Um, and so I really like that. And while you were reading, it also had me thinking not just about the work that we do in the resolution industry, but also under those same verses, um, the values that um, were highlighted so brightly during COVID. And, you know, we sort of lost that, that table for the communication. We lost some of those teams. We lost some of those partnerships. We were challenged by new communication and we had to re-find our way to, to come together and, and communicate. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Natalie. Um, absolutely, and absolutely true. Um, all of a sudden, we were, you know, kind of set adrift in some ways. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cyril, you just unmuted, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, what stood out for me in, in that, that poem was kind of the, the implicit uh, exercise of drawing people back into the resolution of their own issues, as opposed to going to a 
uh, tribunal and having the tribunal decide. Because in order for it to stick, you have to put a little bit of yourself out there. You have to form that relationship. If you haven't spoken with the other person, when you come talk with the mediator, it's very unlikely that, that you're going to come to a, an agreement. And so some of the uh, mediations, some of the mediator's responsibility is to facilitate actually having a conversation, actually bringing those people together. Um, and that, that seemed to come out in uh, some, some portions of the poem there. Beautiful. Yeah, one of the things I always used to say, Cyril, is that um, most of the agreements that lawyers often prepare are what I'll call agreements for protection. What if this goes wrong and what if that goes wrong? And that um, we could do much greater service either as attorneys or as, as mediators if we focus more on what are the results that people want to actually achieve. And, and so, you know, when, when you um, are trying to resolve something, you know, one of the first grounding questions is, all right, what do you, what do you folks want to achieve here? What's the, what's the, what's the ultimate goal? What's the vision? Where are you, where are you trying to get to? All right. And um, let's then figure out and work backwards um, from there. Cool. Um, yeah. I have a comment. Um, so I guess most of us are lawyers and we we work as mediators too. Of course, our roles are different. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, when people go in and or they come to me as a mediator, I certainly can focus on what they want to achieve. And yet lawyers are contingency, you know, finders. Basically, we, you know, we have to operate on the contingencies. So then, you know, then they take their agreements to their respective lawyers to review and then it's all about, well, that's great, but what happens if it doesn't? So I think there's always that kind of conflict. Yeah, that's the edge um, of those roles in the system that we are um, participating in. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the edge. That's the edge of the role that that we need to be aware of, and the capacity to kind of step in and step out, depending upon the particular role that you're playing. Um, is an important one. All right, so um, the next poem I want to read um, is actually called Reinvention. And uh, the reason that I chose to read this poem is because um, as mediators, what we often want to do is reinvent relationships. Reinvent relationships. Sometimes it, it involves reinventing uh, the individuals a little bit, or at least doing our best to help facilitate that. Reinvention. Many lives, one incarnation, try personas, test relations. Some steady, narrow sphere, others, what's new this year? Unhappy things as they are, not knowing what they're for. Who ego thinks you should be blocks essence from being free. Who ego thinks you should be blocks essence from being free. Don't blame anyone else. Want different? Try a new self. If your way has you stewing, time to begin renewing. Don't wait. Let go constraints. Create with fresh paints. No tears, self-pity, remorse. Chart a new path, of course. Shed old skin, leave it behind. Rotate cells, leave worn behind. Peel the old, show new face. Goodbye suffering. Hello, Grace. Now, um, one of the reasons I, I, I chose that poem to read is because one of the greatest um, inhibitions to resolving conflict is what's been identified as ego identification. People identify so much with the stance that they have taken that they can't let go. Uh, this is a little exaggeration, but if they let go of their perspective, um, there would almost be a little bit of a death in some ways. 
because they'd become so ego identifying with the position that they took and are holding on to. Um, as a mediator, I think it's important to have that level of sensitivity to where people are. But the real aim here is to do our best to see if we can't help them uh, reinvent themselves a little bit to get to the other side so that they can let go of that stance they've taken. Thoughts, comments, um, anything. Stuart, I really liked that one. Um, I hadn't actually thought about the cost of letting something go. I think that that's something that we could all intelligently apply in our mediation rooms. There is a cost to letting go of those positions. And I think I hadn't put enough value on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, you know, we all, um, no doubt, um, and sometimes as a, as a cost justification, sometimes as a, um, an enrollment mechanism, um, recognize that there's a cost to ongoing conflict, that you pay a cost each day, um, that any kind of conflict is not resolved, um, and so the idea of letting go, um, one, you stop paying that cost. And we often think of cost in terms of, you know, some kind of financial cost. But there's a huge emotional cost also. Um, um, I'll read a poem a little bit later um, called Forgiveness. And, the, and one of the mistakes that folks often make is, you know, we think forgiveness is a is about a great gift that we give to others when forgiveness is a, a great gift we give to ourselves by um, being able to let go of the emotional pollution that we create in our own being when we hold on to that level of, you know, of, of, of anger and, and take a, a, a fighting posture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really liked your last line in that poem, uh, the, the way you ended it. Um, let's see. Um, I'm flipping pages here, Jean, so. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> shed old skin, leave it behind. Rotate cells, leave worn behind. Peel the old, show new face. Goodbye, suffering. Hello, Grace. <laughs> hello, hello, Grace. Yes, hello, Grace. That's an interesting one to tie in with the shedding of the skin, which brings snakes to mind. But uh... <laughs> yeah, hello, Grace. Mm -hmm. Hello, Grace. And it's you know, kind of, it's kind of interesting to think about costs, though. You know, because obviously, costs. What pops into mind is financial. But you know, if you think about when people, and particularly in family cases. There's so much more of a cost, you know, it could be of their support group, you know, when all of a sudden they're kind of seeing the other person's perspective and maybe shedding, you know, that whatever, letting it go. And then they have a cost of those other relationships, you know, and nothing happens in a vacuum. I, I don't know if I'm articulating this. So there's just so many things that like the power of being able uh, for two people to sit down and recognize each other and then sort of having to defend it, you know, after and what the cost of that is in their society, you know, maybe their religious organizations or whatever the case is. It's just kind of an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, Carol Ann, you you bring up the the incredible level of complexity of situations that you're dealing with. You know that there are so many factors um, involved in 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 people's lives um, in in these kinds of situations. Um, I always used to um, thank people for allowing me. <laughs> and trusting me 
to help them walk through this complex um, space. Mm -hmm. It was it was you know almost an honor um, to to be able to um, do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is a poem that's that's really tied to um, reinvention. Um, and in some ways, it's 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 one of our main goals. It's called letting go, letting go, mm -hmm. because what we want people to do, in some ways, is let go of the stance they've taken. Wars, judgments raging in you, <clears throat> no longer blaring. You're free and new. Let go busyness of yesterday's mind. Step into new life, leave all behind. Windows wiped squeaky clean. Life dream merged with being. Once dark clouds and rain, now sunshine releasing pain. Trust and seeing magnified many fold, suddenly wiser, mystic from old. Much more playful, a child emerged. Admonitions, prohibitions, guilty shame purged. Through this window, see all around, ecstatic presence awakened in sound, voices at eons calling to you, everything taking on a new you. No chatter clouding your now, ego silenced on your clean prow, raining light empowerment from above, embrace and accept that sacred love. So when we let go of the conflict, situation, mindset that's been gripping us, we literally step onto new ground. It's a little bit of a, a rebirth. I know that may sound a little uh, exaggerated, but that's what actually happens. Think about, you know, when people walk out of a situation after they've been in a deep, heavy conflict and can step over into the other side and can uh, look forward um, to the future without the messiness of where they've been. Any thoughts? You know, I've said that kind of thing in mediations in a different way. I've, uh, I think of one where I quoted that song from South Pacific, it's just I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. <laughs> and uh, the um, the party was too young to know what that song was, but I told her she could go look up that movie and see it. <laughs> but basically, get on with your life, you know. Here, you don't have to see or hear or talk to this person again, and you can have your freedom to live your life. Yeah, beautiful, Jean, and that's you know. That's a great example of the art of mediation. Um, it, you know, when you bring in various kinds of uh, literary or um, um, cinematic uh, references that uh, that just might strike a chord and 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 moves and move someone in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. Um, now, um, this is the aim when we are um, mediating, you know, what we hope for is to get a breakthrough of some kind. And we've all been there when we're struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling, and all of a sudden something happens. <laughs> and you see that you've, you've, um, you've at least opened a little crap you know, that there's a, a breakthrough of, of some kind, that some of the intransigence um, is gone. Breakthrough. On a personal verge, step forward, exhibit nerve. World not a frightening place, opportunity to express grace. Tears shed, roar with laughter, focus on a compelling after. Learn lessons, source of wisdom, grow from beauty in them. We all need absolution, preparing for a next solution. Never perfect, at times cruel, sometimes caviar, 
sometimes gruel. Nearing breakthroughs you need, will coming years bring more greed? Have enough to meet needs, have more time to do good deeds. Beyond a problem mindset, see what's here and yet. Challenge for one and all, learn, think, no need to fall. Essentials surround us here, potential bliss, little fear. Live in a grateful way, count blessings, sit and pray. The ability to <clears throat> step to the other side, to have that breakthrough, um, to let go of what was um, binding you um, in chains. Stuart, those particular verses brought to mind the victim offender reconciliation programs um, that we've talked about on Will Work for Food before. Um, you know, breaking chains, finding the light, forgiveness, all of those kinds of things. They are such important factors in the work that some of us do in, in sure, the civil commercial world, the family world, but um, in, in my mind, as you were reading, it was the, the victim offender reconciliation programs that, that came up. Which are um, some of the most important work going on um, in, in our society today. The idea of kind of stepping beyond um, retribution and punishment, um, it, you know, it harkens back and, and it's an area that I've been um, exploring and no doubt many people have explored um, as we're learning about mediation. I remember, you know, researching and exploring um, indigenous ways of moving through conflict which were so different than the traditional um, the court system we function in. Um, you know, I remember a great story about um, <clears throat> a Native American council where um, the whole community gathers in circle. And, and when a, um, uh, a man accused of beating his wife says that he doesn't, uh, the whole community rises up and says, "No, come on, we all we all know that you you do this. There's no question about that. Um, but the aim is to return people to the community. Um, and the mindset is one of um, when somebody ends up acting out outside of the community, um, it's not just their fault to be punished, but what have we done or not done as a community such that this person um, acts out in that way? So um, beautiful that you brought that up, Natalie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, um, what we do is um, future focused. People come in with our current situation and what we want to do is help them recreate for the future so that um, they can discontinue the level of conflict in the past. Future, design tomorrow for yourself. Assess terrain, choose off the shelf. Unique quality as animals. Look front back, discern what will be was. Power residing, birthright we share, use this might for goodness and dare. Planet we inhabit, need strong intention. Billion daily, need modeling, direction. Time right, crisis calls, concentrate. Given the at stake, no time to wait. Look at your life, what can you do? Harness intent, change stewing brew. In a complex world, ambiguous too, deciding what's next takes me and you. Align plans, agree on joint vision, do it now, no indecision. Tomorrow in your mind's eye, not what you borrow, what you tithe. Not being a taker provides some glee, giving awakens best in you and me. So, mm -hmm. 
It's about um, the future. And just by way of um, example, the reflective questions for that poem are, what are you contributing today for the future? How can you share a larger goal and what's really at stake here? Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of reflective questions for each of the daily poems. By the way, my promise is, all right, with this book, um, if you buy the book, if you use it for a year, if you're not happy with the results and the changes, um, I'm happy to refund your purchase price and you can keep the book. <laughs> so it's kind of a, it's kind of what they call in the marketing world, a risk reversal. There is no, uh, there is no, there's no, there's no risk in buying the book. All right. Um, now, um, what we're trying to do um, in working with others, at least it was always my sense, is to create some form of healing. Healing, to create some form of healing of the broken relationships. And, and by the way, it's always a broken relationship. Yeah, there are a narrow class of cases that we deal in where it's all about money. It's all about, you know, how much can we um, can we exact in this situation? Um, you know, personal injury type situations, sometimes um, insurance claims sometimes. But very often, um, you know, we're dealing with broken relationships. And what we want to do is um, do our best to create some level of, of healing for that relationship. Healing, precious moment, current time. Reveal yours, I'll reveal mine. Reveling in other, sharing our own in exchange, seeds are sown. Naked innocence once concealed, in sacred exchange both are healed. Journeying forward, uncovering more, deliverance is assured, find what it's for. Smiles, laughter, in cherished breath, sublime exchange of tenderness. Warmth passing, being to being, a dream state beneath seeing. Realize what's going on, holy communion, a new dawn. Smiling, knowing on your face, embody insides, sharing grace. Mindful, tender, pure intention, admittance to another dimension. Respect, cherish, honor bestowed, bless the comfort traveling home. So a little bit of healing um, as our intention here. And um, along with that healing, um, what we want to do is create some um, connection. Because the connection is really what creates the healing. Um, the models that I always work with um, dealt with the emotional aspect of relationship um, before trying to get the business commercial aspects. Um, and I would modify some of the language that I would use in working with more business um, situations. Um, but to me, drilling down into the emotional aspect of a broken relationship um, was a critical first step because the rest seemed um, relatively easy after that once I could get people beyond um, the emotional angst, then I've got some very specific questions that I um, that I ask. Connection. Long for it, constant search, observe from a unique perch. Why we seek, why we pray, venturing out each day. Longing, a place in the soul, lack of chatter, quiet hole. Connection to familial presence, call it home, feeds our essence. Supporting timbers stand us up. 
belonging fills our cup. Corn does not need much warmth, familiar laughter and such. Alone, lonely, one car garage, need a tribe to lift, recharge. Sitting forlorn in our cups, what's missing, valued much. Seeking ballast in your life, resist stewing in your own spice. Cross the chasm of inner space, reaching others is your grace. So there is a consistent <laughs> theme to these poems. You know, it's about connection. Um, it's about relationships. Um, it's about renewal. It's about letting go. Thoughts, comments? Mm -hmm. Part of um, what we hope will happen, happen through our own machinations and our modeling of a certain kind of presence. And the modeling of a certain kind of presence, I think, is the capacity to um, be soft, um, to listen, to connect, to not be directive, but to just be present to the to the needs of the folks in front of us. So we want to soften ourselves so that they can soften. Opening up, letting go, softening hearts, let you grow. Enhance others with compassion, solid platform with more traction. And no gnarling white knuckle fist, Suddenly, life has a new twist. More choices at your feet, renewal snatched from defeat. Positions trap your being, rigidity blocks clear seeing. Now the time for you begin, give yourself a big wide grin. Let right vanish from your heart. Let right vanish from your heart, melt barricades keeping you apart. We all choose happier right, one imprisons, one takes flight. As you go, as you grow, a blessing you need to know. Give the love longed for self. It returns to everyone else. Give the love longed for self. It returns from everyone else. Stuart, I'd like for you to read that poem in front of the United States Congress and Senate, please. <laughs> you know, um, God, it's now, it's about 20 years ago. I was doing a, a two-day program for the um, Federal Executive Service in Washington, D.C., which are senior executives in federal service had about 60 people. And at the end of two days, I finished the program. And all of a sudden, I see four guys in white uniforms marching towards me. <laughs> and I got a little frightened for a moment, like, you know, what's, 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 what's going on here? And they were four naval officers. And they walked walked up to me and they said, Stuart, this was a wonderful program, but where you really need to deliver this program to is down the block at Congress. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I tried through a number of different contacts that I had who were close to Congress and it never worked. Um, and, and, and the other related story, Natalie, is a um, number of years ago, my book, Getting to Resolution, was chosen as the book for um, Colorado Conflict Resolution Month. They have a conflict 
resolution month in Colorado. It's sponsored by the um, by the Bar Association, and they pick one book. And um, so I got to go to Colorado and present. Um, and part of it was there was a um, a state senator involved um, who brought me in to work with um, the Colorado state government, including then Governor Hickenlooper. Um, but what was the problem? The problem was, um, and I won't name names because I don't want to be partisan here, um, but um, one side failed to show up because the other side was the side that <laughs> that decided to uh, <clears throat> to book the um, the program. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. And I was just going to talk about collaboration. That was that was the that was the purpose of the program. So, yeah, yeah, you know, here we are. This is this is the world that we. Um, that we live in. Um, well, at least on TV and in social media, but I think that there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of we normal plebes, if you will, who are not, I'm not considering myself in that, I hope I am, but there are a lot of people doing some really amazing stuff together and collaborating. And I think it's really important to not focus on the people, the talking heads who get the, the publicity. Because it yeah. really brings me down. I don't know about anybody else. So I really, I'd much rather read your poem in the morning than listen to the news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've taken to doing the same things, Carol Ann, because somehow our media, it's turned into argutainment. Argutainment is, is what it's turned into. And nothing ever gets resolved. You know, nothing ever gets to the bottom. It's just, it's just, you know, the unfortunate um, argutainment. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, what we want to generate, and I mentioned this earlier, is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now the time to day to day, let go of what gets in the way. So long fear, goodbye resentment, one action to achieve contentment about what you choose to do, not what they put you through. Let go of holding, set new intention, lighten your load, take new direction. Hanging on infects you, firing endocrines, blood, blood boiling too. Impacts health and decisions, eliminates revising revisions. Deconstruct this suggestion closely, know it's about you mostly. Saying slowly the word forgiveness, out comes the phrase forgiveness. Here revealed truth of the matter, forgiveness makes hearts pitter patter, takes care of you, takes care of them, get renewed, start over again. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, which is um, one of the things that I always ask. Um, as a preliminary question, um, as I'm facilitating the emotional aspects of conflict, who do you need to forgive and what for? Who do you need to forgive and what for? Really, in some ways, it drives people down um, inside of them. Now, um, The aim here, I've got two more poems I want to do. Is to create a level of peace. Some new level of peace among fighting conflicted parties. Peacemaking, and this is what we are, a noble art inside is the place to start. Motivated to play your part, first look to your heart. Actions reflect an inner smile. Engagement transcends ego's while. 
Find in your inner reserves a driver when you lose nerves. Your humanity pushes this end, not knowing the next bend. Compassionate wings of dove, sweet nectar of pure love. Quietly touching inner source, stop chatter, let go of remorse. Vision of peace that abides, clear about your insides. Faith emerges, quieting fear, trust that you will get there. Narrow steps, more steep and true, mindful counsel, it's not about you. Selfless presence guides the way, vehicle with a sense of play. Silent center, chaos all around, birthing peace on common ground. So that's our, um, our intention to create peace among the parties. And it starts with creating peace um, within yourself. And so, um, given that when Natalie introduced me, she referred to me as the resolutionary. And, and, and I love that. Um, where did that come from? I didn't pay a branding expert thousands and thousands of dollars to come up with that. <laughs> a client called me that around uh, 1990. You're a resolutionary uh, after finishing a matter. <laughs> and I immediately put it on my business card. And what was really funny was when Apple released um, the iPad, if you went to the Apple homepage, it said resolutionary. And so some friends were telling me that I ought to go after Apple for stealing my IP. <laughs> I just kind of laughed. So I'll close with this poem called Resolution. All right. <clears throat> for getting to the other side, let go old frames and pride. Move from gripped in fright to new ground with delight. Mastery swaddled in your dream from your triggers too serene. What was holding you in chains no longer binds, let go of pains. Conflict arises as we seek, out there engage, testing meek, yield power, invest in others' might, then justify why we're right. Resolution provides peace, wheel stop spinning, let go release, not when convincing yourself, it's the fault of someone else. Resolutions about letting go, choose to forgive, time to grow, understand perspectives they bring, celebrate, allow hearts to sing. They did not have you gripped by fears, your constructs caused grinding gears, perceiving from a new place, your reward, emergent grace. So um, I wanna thank you all for um, hanging out a while. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for your thoughts and comments. Uh, Natalie, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's been a pleasure um, sharing this poetry uh, with you today. And um, that really is about all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Another poem. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thanks so much, Stuart. We really support, uh, rather, we really appreciate the support that you um, have offered to the Will Work for Food initiative. Um, Jean, do you have any closing comments that you'd like to add for us today? I just thank you so much. This is fascinating. What a different way to look at uh, conflict and dispute, resolving disputes. Thank you. My pleasure. It was fun, it was fun to put it together. So um, thanks, everybody.
Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Well, if um, if you're inclined or, or you you know you you are thinking about where to donate your money, please consider the Alameda Central Food Bank and support Stewart's for Food Preferred Food Bank. Of course, if you have a food bank that you love, heart and soul, donate to your private personal food bank in your area so that your friends, your neighbors can make that or can get that benefit. Thanks so much, Stuart. Thank you all. Thank you.